Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. We're gonna look at one verse. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. The title of the message is, this should be on your mind. This should be on your mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. This should be on your mind. The Bible says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Dear Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to meet, Lord. Lord, we thank you for saving us from hell. Lord, we're surrounded by brethren here, and we're, uh, we have some people who are missing today due to sickness. Father, we pray that you please be with them, heal them and their families, and help them to return to us, Lord. Lord, as we listen to the preaching today, Lord, Father, we pray please be with us, Lord. Move us with the Holy Spirit, and of course, uh, use Pastor Jay to deliver your word to us, Lord. Whatever you prepare, Lord, we know that it's going to be each and every one of us, Lord, not for some of us, but all of us. So, Father, we pray you please fill with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and um, open our hearts. Please bless the rest of the day and bless the fellowship that we're going to have, and bless uh, the Bible study, and bless everything, and help us to be thankful for everything that we can do for you, Lord, especially in these last days. In Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. 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 This should be on your mind. And as you go through your mind and trying to Think about what should be on your mind right now. When we see 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, we see clearly that heaven should be on your mind. Heaven should be on my mind. Heaven should be part of your thoughts at a daily, you know, every moment. When you're going through your sickness, as many of you are going through right now, what's on your mind? Is it the medicine that you have to take? Is that your work schedule? Is that your finances? Is that your relationship? What is on your mind when you're going through sickness? If you're going through any other issues of life, what is on your mind? Heaven should be on your mind. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, I hath not seen, nor ye heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Think about it. It's beyond our thoughts, beyond our imagination. It, we can't comprehend with our, you know, tiny, peanut-sized brain, peanut-sized mind, what God has prepared for us. And it's only for those who have trusted Jesus Christ as, door, as Lord and Savior. And that's the first thing. In order for you to have this on your mind, and it has to make sure, and you have to make sure that you'll be going there. And if you're not going there, if you have you know, concerns about going there, if you're not sure if you're going there, even if this is on your mind, it's not 100% sure, then that's not a place to be. Who's on that boat? Many people, before they die on their deathbed, they're very scared, they're fearful. Why? After that, they don't know where they're going. They could have heaven on their mind, but however, they're not 100% sure they'll wake up in heaven. If you are on that boat right now, if you don't know where you're going after you die, whether you believe or not, according to the word of God, there's heaven and hell. Right. And Bible is our final authority, Amen. KJV 1611. Everybody tried to disprove it. Everybody tried to you know, contradict it, but no one has. You're like, oh, how do you know? You know because the Bible says so, and everybody tried to have debates here and there, but they never, they never could prove it wrong. All the prophecies came to be true of a one man, and that's Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Dr. Ruckman wrote many, many books, and you know, problem text, you could go look at it, right? You know, don't just take out a verse. That's what many people do. They take out a single verse and try to run with it. If I see you, are you only your eye? 
if I see you, are you only your ear? If I see you, am I only, are you only your mouth? You're your whole being, your complete being. When you look at the Word of God, you have to look at the whole book and whole context. You have to know who is it for, when is it for. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. That's where dispensationalism comes. And as you know this and as you hear this, if you're not sure where you're going after you die, and if heaven's not 100% certain, there's one place that will be certain for you, right? That's called hell. Right. Yeah. Because you're already condemned to burn in hell. People have a wrong idea that, okay, I have a choice to go to heaven or hell. No, no you have a choice to go to heaven. Right. Because you're already, you know, you got your ticket to go to hell. Right. Because you're born with sin. Right? You're born in your trespasses. You know, your body and soul is stuck together. There's no spiritual circumcision that has happened in your life because if you don't trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're already condemned to burning hell. That's why you could do all the good works in the world. You could give money to the charity. And you, could, you could dedicate your life to the poor. However, if you don't do what the Bible says, if you don't do what God told you to do in order to go to heaven, that's all for naught. Many people try to be good to others. Many people try to be kind to others. Many people try to dedicate their life to others. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not a condition of going to heaven. Right. Condition of going to heaven is just one thing. What have you done with Jesus Christ? If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're going to heaven no matter what. You, know, you hear the term, once saved, always saved. Yeah. And that's the biblical doctrine especially in this church age, because Christ died for you once. Amen. He didn't die for you multiple times. He died for you once. You accept him as your Lord and Savior once, you're saved forever, once and for all. What you do after you get saved is up to you, yeah. right? You lose your inheritance in heaven. You know, you reap what you sow. You know, it's all fair, and it's going to be according to what the Bible says. But one thing you don't have to worry about is what? Burning in hell. Amen. One thing you don't have to worry about what? You know, suffering for all eternity in pain, in torment. That's where people lose their perspective. It's an eternal question. It's not a, you know, our life question. You know, we live maybe what? 60, 70, 80, 90, you know, 100 years. That's it. And your life is over. However, this is eternity we're talking about. Your soul will spend eternity in heaven forever or burn in hell forever. You'll be in God's glory forever in your mansion. I mean, thinking about 1 Corinthians 2, 9, or burn in hell forever and ever and ever. And when people hear that, they say, you're, you're, you're kind of, you know, being extreme. You're too mean. You know, I'm not. Only reason I'm telling you this is because I don't want you to spend eternity burning in hell. Because it's so simple. That's why they call it a simple plan of salvation. If you follow, I mean, if you trust that simple plan of salvation, then heaven is waiting for you. If you don't follow, you have to have it your way then hell is waiting for you. you know, this time of the year, everybody you know, com commercialized you know, Christ's birth, you know, which isn't even this time, you know, according to the historical timeline and the weather and everything, you know, consider. But people do think about it. They see little Jesus in a manger, right? What do they see? Or do they see... God in flesh, savior of the world, or do they see some little baby they could decorate? And then they could, you know, put it in front of their, you know, yard so that everybody could go and then say, oh man, that's a great house with lights, right? People don't really truly think about what it means to be saved. People don't really think about heaven. People really don't think about hell. That's why 
You won't understand when Duarte L. Moody said, we are nearer heaven tonight than we have ever been before in our lives. That's Dwight L. Moody saying it, right? When you're not saved and you don't know where you're going, I'm sorry. You are nearer to your death. You're nearer to your eternity in hell. Simple as that. Man. So we're getting closer to heaven every day. If you don't trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're getting closer to hell every day. Closer and closer. And you don't know what's going to happen today. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, the Bible clearly says life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Amen. It could vanish away just like that. Right. I mean, we've heard so many, so many, you know, tragic stories everywhere. There's shooting. There's accidents. There's heart attacks. Right? How do you know that your heart's going to not give out today or tomorrow? It's not about people who's unhealthy. We're talking about all types of people, healthy people, unhealthy people, everybody in between. You could, you could have, you know, ran 10 miles, and you've been doing that every single day, and you feel like you're the healthiest person in the world. But when your time is up, and right after your 10-mile run, you, know, you feel good, and then you just drop dead. We heard that story many, many times, everywhere. Or you're just driving, and you're following all the laws. You're going 65 and under, you know, you keep distance everywhere. But suddenly, out of nowhere, this crazy driver running from the cops hits you, blindsides you. And you could be dead just like that. I mean, we had a story in Brooklyn, New York. This mom and two kids, her two kids, were waiting for other two siblings, you know, to get off the school bus. But they got hit by a car. Hit by a car by a woman who was running away from the police. I mean, thankfully, they all survived. Can you believe it? You're just waiting to pick up your children at a bus stop, and out of nowhere, just out of control car, just come and hiss all of you. If she is not saved, then her, you know, children as well. And if they understand good and evil, what's going to happen? You get hit by a car and you wake up in hell. I mean, that's, that's a terrible thing, right? But if you get hit by a car, you wake up in heaven. That's a different story as well. Right? People always think about this tragic, just the worst possible scenarios. That's why people like to watch news. Let's see what bad thing happened this time of the round in LA area. Let's see what kind of car chase is going on today. Because to other parts of the world, that's rare occasion, but here, especially in Southern California, it happens almost all the time. That's the purpose. But when it comes to you, you have to solve that problem first. If you were to die right now, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? It's not about I think so. It's not about I hope so. It's not about you know, I'm working towards that goal. You know, it's not working towards that goal. It's already been accomplished. Lord did everything on the cross, on Calvary. He shed every drop of blood for you. So all you have to do is trust him as your Lord and Savior. Simple as that. If you go beyond that, or if you don't go even to that point and just accept it, what's going to happen? Then you become crazy. Then you, you become an out of place. Your brain becomes out of place. Right? It can't be that simple. I have to do something. Right? It can't be that free. I have to do something. I mean, if an almighty God wanted to give you an easier way and faster way and simplest way to go to heaven, wouldn't you just take it? Yeah. If your grandpa, you know, during Christmas time says, hey, come here, Johnny, you know, here's a gift for you. What are you going to do? Grandpa, I'm going to work for it, so wait for me, okay? 
You know, Grandpa, you know, I have to do something else before you give that to me. No, you're going to be excited. You know, thank you so much, Grandpa. You know, I love you so much. And you just accept and you open it right away, right? God has given you that free gift of salvation to everybody. Amen. And all you have to do is just receive it from your heart. Simple as that. And you become child of God. If God himself died for you, that means he wanted you to have an easier path. Right? We always have a comparison. If your mother loved you so much and you kill somebody, you murder somebody, but told the judge that, you know what, I'm going to take my son's place and I'm going to die for my son, you know, for the capital punishment. Then some gets free. But wife dies. I'm not wife, I mean mother. Does the son have to die again for the same crime? No. Mom paid for it. And son's forever thankful. Christ already paid for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. Why do you want to pay for the sins that's already been forgiven? Why do you not accept that, that verdict from Almighty God? Jesus Christ paid for all your sins. You just accept it, trust it, then you're not guilty anymore. His righteousness is imputed unto you. Just like that case. The mom dying for the son, that righteousness was imputed unto the son, so that son doesn't have to pay for that sin anymore because judge sees the son as free, clean, righteous. Same thing. You are standing in front of an almighty God and you're supposed to burn in hell. But Christ took your place and died for your sins on the cross. You just accept it. Then in God's eye, Christ's righteousness is imputed unto you. So you no, you no longer is guilty. With all, that, with all that said, if you still reject Jesus Christ when it is so simple to receive him as your Lord and Savior, man, I don't know what to say. You know, it's your loss for all eternity. But if you have been on the fence for all these years, I've heard many, many times from TV, from the streets, from my friends, from my loved ones about Jesus Christ. And man, you know, should I really accept him as my Lord and Savior? You know, if you've been on the fence right now, you know, you might not have more chance to be on that fence. You know, this 2022 might be the last year of your life. And today might be the last day of your life. Yeah. Then why not trust Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because if you already know that you're a sinner and judgment is waiting for you, and you know that you know, you're not good enough to go to heaven on your own, then you just trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. Everybody loves free stuff. I mean, who doesn't like free things, right? right. You know, if someone were to say, hey, there's free food, and it's from a great chef, right? You guys will line up and try to eat it, you know? If someone said there's, you know, free phone, right? I don't know, what's the latest, iPhone 20? It's like, a, yeah, everybody's free. You'll be waiting, or Samsung, or everything. You know, hey, there's a, everybody, okay, here's a, let's see, what other free stuff people like, right? Gift certificate, right? Hey, here's a $1,000 gift certificate for, you know, department store of your choice, you know, or Walmart or Target. You guys will be waiting. You know, if, if we announce it and there's only three tickets or three certificates, and then first three will get it, there'll be like hundreds of people. Or if it's a random drawing and only 100 people will get the ticket to get the drawing, everybody will be flocking. When it's free, people love it. But when salvation is free, isn't it amazing? And isn't it ironic? People say, oh, no, no, no. I'll accept any material things to be free, but accept salvation. Then you can't have heaven on your mind. I'm sorry. You're just working towards something. 
You're that type of person who live all your life, never enjoy the blessings of your life. Just work, 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 and work, and just die. You have nothing to show for it as far as your joy in your life. You and, I can, you and I can have that joy of salvation. You and I can have this heaven that we can look forward to. That is waiting for us. That's why Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Unlike people who have no hope, after they die, you and I have this hope, right? We are going to be up there one day. And I, you and I should set our affection not on things here. If you and I are millionaires and billionaires, but our health fails us, what good is it? Right? I mean... If you are the healthiest person, but you get a stroke and you lose function half of your body, what good is it? Right? right? That's why you set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Right. And if you heard this intro to the message, and if you still aren't going to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, according to the Word of God, your destination is clear. You will burn in hell for eternity. But if you have decided to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, your destination is also clear. You have eternal life in heaven. Amen. And no one can ever take that away from you. Even if you kill yourself after you get saved, you're going to heaven. Even if you become crazy, you're going to heaven. Once saved, you're saved forever. Amen. That's why, why would you reject such a simple, free salvation. You have to be crazy. You have to be so stubborn. You have to be so, how should I say, on your own mind and thinking that you're better than the Almighty and you're trying to reason with the Almighty God, then hey, no. You're taking your chances. But don't take chances. Why do people have insurance? Because there's a risk involved when you're driving. There's a chance that you could get into an accident. Why do people have life insurance? There's a chance that you might die, so you want to leave some money for your loved ones, right? Why do people have a, you know, risk-averse actions at companies? Because there's chances that you could lose money. Then there's a risk of you burning in hell. Whether you believe it or not, you have a risk of burning in hell, one in a trillion chance, say, right? But if that does happen, then you're going to burn forever. Eternity is longer than trillion years. Eternity is bigger than the one to the one million zeros in the back. So do you want to take that chance when you don't have to take that chance? And as Christians, this should be on your mind, and heaven should be on your mind. Why? Because heaven is home of the Lord, and heaven is eternal, and hell, heaven is a building of God, and heaven has many mansions. You know, NIV changed it to rooms, you know, you know many rooms. I mean, I, don't, I think mansions a lot better for me. I mean, a hundred times, thousand times better to me. You know, we live in this busy times, and some people are more fortunate than others, right? But as Christians, you don't have to worry about it. You're going to have your own mentions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pure gold. Who likes gold? Who likes pure gold, right? We always talk about 14 carat, 18 carat, how many carats, you know, people like about gold. Heaven. Pure gold. You know, Revelation 20 and 18 said, The city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. How about it? You know, city of pure gold. 
That's heaven. I mean, that's just some descriptions that we could, you know, kind of understand with our little minds. Heaven is decked with jewels and precious stones. I mean, there's gates of pearl. Pure river of water, clear as crystal. I mean, anything that you think is great and pure, I mean, really, that's heaven. But the thing is, you and I will be going there one day, right? I mean, Apostle Paul was in that third heaven, came back, and he couldn't wait to go back. I mean, can you believe it, right? It's not for us, though, you know. Don't think that suddenly, you know, you saw heaven and hell, you know, and then came back. No, no, no. no. That's, not, that's not how the Lord deals with you right now in a special case. And as you hear the description of heaven, and you know, there are many names of heaven, right? There's third heaven, right? Kingdom of Christ and of God, you know, Father's house and place of rest. Don't you want rest? You know, everybody, don't you want that, you know, peace, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure even the younger ones, you're all about education, education, and after you grow up, you have your job, you know, you have to take care of your family, yourself, you know, you have other things to deal with. I mean, how many days do you really have that rest, right? I mean, you know, you have to work to make a living, and if you don't work, you know, you could rest all you want, but, you know, you're not going to make ends meet, right? But in heaven is a place of rest. I mean, Hebrews 4, 9 says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That's how we work hard. That's how you work hard. At your work, at home, at church, everywhere. Because there is a permanent rest waiting for you. But if you're not going to heaven, there's a permanent torment waiting for you in hell as well. Then you do have to think both, right? You know, heaven is on my mind. But since heaven is on my mind, for the lost souls out there, hell is on my mind as well. They're always going together, right? Heaven will give you that encouragement Heaven will give you that peace. Heaven will give you that, you know, conviction. But also, heaven will make you realize that, man, there are some folks I might not see in heaven. I must reach out to them. I must talk to them again, over and over and over. Because if you don't see them in heaven, where are they going to be? Simple as that. You know, it's not like, you know, we're going to a camping trip and, hey, let's meet at, you know, Yosemite. You see them, you're there, right? But if you don't see them, hey, man, they might be at home and stuff, right? Or they might be somewhere else. They might be lost somewhere. But however, when we're in heaven and if you don't see your loved ones, your acquaintance, you know, anybody that came across in your life, if you don't see them there, then where are they going to be? You know, they're not lost out in the woods, no. They're actually burning in hell. Then you have to think, you know, as heaven is on my mind, do lost souls stay on my mind as well? As heaven is on my mind, does hell still come to my mind as well? If both of them don't come to you, then you're not balanced, right? That's why... When you hear and descriptions and names of heaven, you should think more and more and more on it. I mean, size of heaven is immeasurable, right? You know, it's also known as New Jerusalem. And heaven, you know, it's a holy place. Wouldn't you guys want to be at a place that's holy? With all this junk going on in this world. And your mind and my mind you know, it's full of junk and sinful thoughts as well. That's right. I mean, sometimes like, you think, man, why am I thinking like this, right? Because you have your old nature. 
you're sinful, right? But in heaven, you'll never have to worry about any single sinful thoughts. You have your perfect body and perfect mind, right? Everything that comes out of your mind, mouth is perfect. Yes. Every thought is perfect. Amen. Man, I don't have to, you know, pray to God, God, you know, keep me holy today, you know, fill me with that Holy Ghost, you know, help me not to, you know, lie, right? You know, because how many of you guys lie? You lie. I mean, eventually, if you haven't lied for the last, I don't know, 300 days, you probably will lie sooner or later. Whether it's a white lie, whether it's, you know, big lie, you know, you're going to get to a point you might just say some stuff and you don't think it's a big deal. But sin is a sin. Amen. But in heaven, it's a holy place. You won't have to worry about that. And heaven is a place of no tears. And that's a wonderful place to be. I mean... When life gets tough, when you get hurt by situation, circumstance, or by people, and sometimes by your own mistakes, sometimes by their mistakes, it hurts you bad. And many times people shed tears for that. If your loved ones suddenly pass away, if, if you know, someone gets hurt suddenly, you know, you shed tears, right? Even, you know, even with animals, right? If you're a dog lover, if you're a cat lover, so anything. And then you spend a lot of time with them, and then they pass away. You know, people can shed tears for that, right? You shed tears for your country, you know. You shed, you shed tears for those, you know, poor ones out there, you know, unsafe people out there. But in heaven... No more tears. Amen. No more. I mean, definitely then I want to think about that place. I want to think about a place where I don't have to worry about shedding tears ever again. Yes. You know, sometimes people say, oh, man, you know, I, sh I, don't, I never shed tears, right? But I know your heart could shed tears. Mm -hmm. You might not show it externally, but internally many people go through that how should I say, heartbreaking, right? Then, but in heaven, you don't have to worry about that. And heaven is a place without night or darkness. You know? If you like darkness, I don't know, you know. I'd rather be in the light, right? I mean, and literally, in heaven, there would be no night there. And heaven is a place without hunger, thirst, you know, even excessive heat, you know, or excessive cold. As in, like, you're not going to be affected by it, right? How many of you are hungry this morning? If you haven't had breakfast, you know, you might be hungry, right? How many of you were hungry yesterday? Well, people get hungry. But in heaven, you won't be hungry. And in heaven, there'll be no devil. Man, no more tempter. No more thieves. No more sinners. How many of you have ever been wrong in your life? I mean, whether it's your family, your coworkers, supposed friends out there, you know. How many people have cheated on you? How many people, you know, lied to you? How many people disappointed you? you know? But in heaven, you won't have to worry about that. You, know, you won't have to worry about not trusting what that person is saying. You, know? you don't have to second guess. You don't have to third guess. You don't have to be disappointed and you know, be sad over and over and over. Everything's perfect. And that's heaven. And that's not on your mind. I mean, that's, that's shame on you, literally. Why would you not want to have heaven on your mind? And in heaven, our bodies will be like Christ's glorious body, I mean, which cannot sin. It's immortal. 
You know, people say, oh man, I want to be like Superman. You know, when, when little kids are there, you know, yeah, or they have their superheroes everywhere. You're your own superhero in heaven. Man, you have that perfect body, glorious body. You know, getting old is never fun, right? Your body aches long more. You don't recover as fast. And think about all the sickness going around. I mean, some people never gotten cold or flu in their life, but they're getting it continuously nowadays, right? But I, I sprain my hand somehow, you know. It's not going away. I mean, in the past, you know, it would just get healed, you know, in my younger days, right? I felt wrong, and then I sprained it, and this side is just not going away. You know, it's still, this, there's discomfort there. But in heaven, I don't have to worry about that, right? I mean, if you have back problems, I know many people have back problems. Man, in heaven, you don't have to worry about that, right? But you don't have to worry about how to get up, you know? how to get down. Like, you don't have to worry about stretching. <laughs> Nowadays, like, as you get certain age, you have to stretch. Or else you're going to you know, strain or sprain something in your body. And then you can't go about your normal days, you know, task without you know, grins, grimacing and you know, just some yelp comes out of your mouth, you know. But in heaven, you have that perfect, glorious body like Christ, and you don't have to worry about that. Man, I want to, I mean, wouldn't you want to be in heaven right now? Man, I want to be in heaven right now. I mean, that's the type of place God has prepared for us. I mean, it, it, I mean there's, it's a, heaven is a picture of just perfection, right? There's a perfect satisfaction. As a human being, we're like insatiable beings. As in, we can never be satisfied fully, right? If you eat that perfect food, a few hours later, you want that food again, all right? If you have a good cook in your family, whether it's your mom, grandma, you know, your wife, or anybody, sisters, right? And men as well, you know, dads out there, you know, or grandpa, you know, even your sons. And when they make you that special dish, it gives you that satisfaction. But time passes by, you want it again, again and again. Oh, well, we have some good cooks here, right? You know, Brother Oscar and Oscar, you know, has some, you know, great tacos, you know, it's like, man, that was such a satisfying food. But you can't have it every day, right? Just like anything. You know, you have your, everybody has their own pre preference of pies, right? Apple pie, key lime pie, meringue, or anything. It's such a satisfying taste. But even an hour later, a few hours later, you earn it. I mean, you're yearning for you want it again and again but in heaven it's perfect satisfaction that's it man that that is that is a place i want to be I mean, i'm just satisfied i mean we have hymns you know i'm satisfied right i'm just satisfied what is the purpose of life anyways right you know you want to be satisfied you have goals set in your life right you accomplish it you're satisfied you meet the loved one that you want to meet you're satisfied right you have a happiness together with family, you're satisfied. But that's not something that's like going to be same throughout your whole life. There's up and downs, up and downs, up and downs. But in heaven, it's perfect satisfaction forever. Amen. I mean, heaven is a perfect place of sinlessness, as I mentioned. Perfect government, right? You guys, you know, always talk about, complain about governments of here, the world, everywhere. But heaven is a place of perfect government. I mean, heaven is a perfect place of provision. There's perfect glory, perfect possession, you know, communion, provision. 
Everything is a perfect place. And as a Christian, as I conclude, you know, have heaven been on your mind lately, right? I know the things of the world will take you away. Your flesh will take you away from those thoughts. The devil will take that away from you. Because when heaven's not on your mind, what's going to happen? Everything else is on your mind. And it becomes, how should I say, you're running around like a chicken without its head, right? There's no focus. There's no right purpose. But if heaven's on your mind, there's going to be right focus. There's going to be right priority. Because when I don't think about heaven, what happens? I'm all over the place, right? With the things of the world, things that's going on in my life. But when heaven's on my mind, it's like, man, it guides me to the right path. You know, I'm like, you know, if I was going this way, that way, that way, I'm going straight again, right? Because when you're setting your affection on things above, your affection is on the Lord Jesus Christ. Your affection is on the right things. And with that, you also think about lost souls out there. Because last thing I want is one of you know, my loved ones to not to go to heaven, yeah. right? Ultimately, it's up to their decision. But I'll do anything I can to reach out to them, right. talk to them. You know, because it's God's will. Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Yeah. It's not what people think. God is, you know, fiery God who wants to send everybody to hell. No. Completely opposite. God wants everyone to get saved. And that's what the Bible says. It's just that you have to do it his way. I mean, that's reasonable, right? The creator of the universe says, okay, I want you to go to heaven. But you just have to do as how I instruct you to do it. Simple as that. And that's by trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, as I end, you know, you have opportunity. So if you, ha if you haven't been that person on the fence, if you didn't even have an assurance of salvation all this time through so many false doctrines that you've been involved with, it's clear doctrine here. Salvation, Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. You and I are sinners on our way to hell. Well, that's what the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. That's why you die. But your soul is eternal, and you will spend eternity in hell without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But the fear of unbelieving, abominable murders, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brims, which is second death. As a liar, as a sinner, if you do not solve all your sin problems, you're going to burn in hell. However, but God commended his love towards us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. God, in his infinite grace and mercy, sent his begotten son, Jesus Christ. And he died for all your sins on the cross so that you could go to heaven. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Then you must do a couple things. Repent, right? This is just change of mind, you know. You're willing to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're turning away from your ways and turning to God to save you. With that mind, then Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Then Bible says, but as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. The choice is yours. The choice is for you to either trust Christ as your Lord and Savior or reject him. You could accept him as your Lord and Savior and have eternal life. You could reject him and burn in hell forever. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. It is very important, whether you're saved or unsaved, to have heaven on your mind. 
But if you're safe, you know for sure that you're going there. But if you're not safe, it's just your dream that you're going to end up in hell. If you, are, if you know that you're a sinner and you don't want to burn in hell, if you want to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell, in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ. Prayer is not going to save you, but it's your heart. If you do it from your heart, the Lord said you'll be saved. And if you want to get saved and know for sure that you'll go to heaven once and for all, in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. With all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust the precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know,